At Itzaltau, we believe that to live beautifully doesn't mean to only surround oneself with gorgeous things. For us, to live beautifully means treading carefully and making responsible choices. This is Live Green, an eco standard that we at Itzaltau hold ourselves and our suppliers accountable to. The Live Green logo is our seal of approval for beautiful design that is both eco friendly and sustainable. Live Green designs minimize the impact on the environment during both manufacturing and use. They incorporate eco-friendly technology and make responsible design decisions so that our customers can too. Our Itzaltal commercial team have selected a range of world-leading products that all pass our green test. We've also partnered with leading suppliers, designers, architects and project professionals to bring Live Green to life on a larger scale with major commercial developments that have under the skin green credentials. Local tile partner Ceramic Industries has been committed to sustainable innovation for 40 years. Their Ecotech tiles are lighter thanks to the use of less clay, yet still strong. They also require less energy, are lighter to transport and use less water during the manufacturing process to reduce their overall carbon footprint. Another seasoned Ital tile commercial supplier, Ceramica Sant Agostino, has a complete green action plan known as EcoQuality. All of their products, including their incredible range of color art wood look tiles, are manufactured to respect strict European and international rules to protect both the environment as well as the end user. Thai brand Cotto was the first bathroom wear manufacturer to receive the carbon reduction label for all its products an accolade only awarded when there is a significantly reduced amount of carbon emissions during the manufacturing process. Their innovative products include water-saving taps and sustainable sanitary wear, such as their Simply Modish wall-hung toilet. The name Laufen is synonymous with award-winning perfection and the design and manufacture of beautifully green products. All Laufen products are made in line with Italtal's Live Green ethos from their LCC surface finishes, which interact with the natural forces of water, to their rimless toilet technology for effortless hygiene control and game-changing Sephir Ceramic, the world's thinnest ceramic. Idral has been designing and manufacturing taps, sanitary wear and accessories for public and commercial places since 1970. Today, they specialize in highly technical, resistant, safe, accessible, hygienic and environmentally friendly products. From Omar's attention to recycling and awareness of consumption of natural resources in all their showering solutions, to Oli's water-saving systems, including compact flush systems, and Tivoli's incredible water-wise tap solutions, all top sellers for good reason. From green suppliers to green projects, Itzaltal Commercial is proud of the many building projects we've been involved in, including the Falcon Building, part of Menland's main mixed-use development, the APSA Building in Cape Town, Arvab Medical Center, and the Nelson Mandela Children's Hospital. Even our own new stores are designed to be as environmentally sustainable as possible. Reducing our in-store energy consumption, exploring eco-friendly materials for the construction of green buildings, and keeping a close eye on our carbon footprint. Fashions come and go. But sustainability will always be trending at Itzaltal, because green goes with everything. Live green. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you for joining us this afternoon for our Itzaltal Trend Talk webinar um, with Melanie Ewing. Uh, Melanie is the founder and CEO of Chapters International. Um, which is an international interior design company, as well as it inter internationally accredited, those are big words, apologies, internationally accredited decorating and design training, offering online courses as well as industry training. Um, Melanie herself has worked on interior projects in South Africa, China, as well as Japan. Um, and Mal, if I'm correct, you partnered with Itatile since 2018. Um, and today? 2017. 2017. 
long. <laughs> so um, Melanie has been very, very involved with all of our training on interior design with all of our Itatal staff. Um, as well as quarterly training that is hosted with all of our new Itatal staff. So Melanie is really a powerhouse within our industry. She works very closely with Itatal. Um, and it's not only benefits our new staff, but benefits our clients as well. So Mel, thank you for taking the time joining us today. I'm really excited for this trend talk. I know that we've just been through, a, um, through an interesting training session with you, hence us wanting to bring it through to the industry and to the market. Um, but just a bit of housekeeping, we will be allowing some questions uh, throughout the uh, presentation, but if you can manage that within the chat box, um, you can just type them up and then we'll attend to all the questions post Melanie's um, presentation. But Mel, from us, thank you so much. And um, we really enjoy our time with you. We love having you as a partner of Itatal, and we really enjoy each and every session with you. So off you go. Um, thank you. Thank you, Nicole. And um, Itatal and Nicole know how I love to speak and know how I love to speak about anything related to architecture and design. Uh, so this is actually quite a lot of fun for me. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about uh, the trends that are influencing our market at the moment. I just want to share my presentation with you, so give me two seconds. And Melanie, just switch off your webcam in the meantime. Webcam off. Are we good? We are good. Okay. Okay, so... As I said, what I wanted to share with you today is um, what's going on in, in the train space, in, in um, the built environment. So before we go on to all the fun stuff of what's on trend and what we should be spending ours or our, our um, customers' hard-earned money on, I just want to talk a little bit about how trains work, because if you go in blindly and start a, a splashing money at trends there's a couple of ways to to trip up so so let's just have a a quick chat before we get to the actual trends in terms of how they work so trends are, are fickle little things so what happens is they tend to overlap each other so one thing will be coming into the market as another thing that might be its opposite is actually going out so you'll so you'll sometimes see them appearing in the in the same space at the same time Trends also tend to influence each other. So one will drive the other. So um, you'll see later on in our presentation, I talk about warm neutral colors linked to uh, color of the year. So they tend to drive each other um, almost as tides going through the market. So trends are cyclical as well. You'll, you'll see that things uh, tend to that the same things tend to come in and out of fashion. So think of it in terms of bell bottom jeans. So bell-bottom jeans, let's say, came about in the 1960s, 1970s. They came in fashion, then they went out of fashion, then they came back in fashion maybe in the early 1980s, and they were then uh, in stonewashed. And then they went out of fashion, and then they came back in fashion uh, in corduroy. So the, the, the longer-lasting uh, trends do tend to come back. They just sometimes in a slightly different form. Trends are very much geographical. So um, what is popular in uh, Somerset West might not be popular in Joburg, for example. What's uh, trending in South Africa might not be what's trending in Europe. So it's very geographically influenced. So depending on who you're working with and where they're based, you might find that they're responding to, to different trends. Trends can also contradict each other. So I'm going to um, talk to you about a couple uh, going on at the moment where you'll find that opposites of each other are trending at the moment. So in some instances, dark grout and hiding your grout will appear as a trend at the same time. So they're not mutually exclusive. And also, um, tends to, trends tend to have a lifespan um, where some are really short and some become sort of ingrained in a society and they become a cultural norm. So if you have a look at um, the lifespan of trends, they sort of, most trends tend to start off as a fad. If you think about the fidget spinners, those little triangle shaped things that uh, all the kids <clears throat> and oh sorry and some adults were were fiddling with a couple of years ago that's a fad it comes in and out of fashion very very quickly it's there for a short uh, space of time if it sticks around it becomes a micro trend and a micro trend lasts for about three to five years 
so for example a certain style of fashion or certain style of dress it only generally affects one segment of the population and it uses social media a lot to gain traction uh, to to a broader market then if that sticks around it becomes a macro trend and macro trends are they per pervasive they they spread out into a lot of uh, uh, sectors of society and they they um they're quite persistent in terms of creating a global influence so they they have a much bigger global reach and from there you get something called a mega trend and mega trends are they global they sustained they last for a very long period of time um, and they start almost having their own um, economies and a really good example of this is sustainability so um, sustainability uh, the idea of sustainability started very many years ago um, almost as a hippie type movement where um, we were going to be uh, more vegan or vegetarian we were going to change a couple of light bulbs and that was going to, to solve uh, the earth's problems and then we moved on to CFCs and the whole in the ozone layer and uh, we we realized we could do something about that and so sustainability has moved from a fad all the way through the processes of micro macro and mega and now sustainability has become this mega trend that impacts business economies it has its own uh, green economy society cultures and personal lives of people around the globe so it becomes ingrained in our daily lives and our society so it's just something to remember when you are looking at trends or talking trends with a with a client for example that they do have lifespans the other thing about trends is in this day and age, they are very dependent on social media. So some start out as quite subtle and they executed with reason and intention, but the, the more they spread, what happens is the more disconnected and diluted they tend to get. And suddenly everyone um, has the same trend in their house and no one really knows why they're doing anything. They were just sort of following their leader. So it's almost the the, the the interiors or the design industry version of uh, fast fashion. So while the rise of social media has fueled a, a, a lot of design turnover, Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, these have all made good design available to a much bigger mass audience than it used to be. So we're, we're sharing things like DIY hacks, fa fancy furniture dupes, and other tips and tricks or access to new products, for example, that are bringing the trends to everyone, not just everyone, just not just those that can afford designers. So, so social media is playing this really big role in fast tracking or changing uh, the adoption of, of trends. And one of the big things to remember about trends is our consumers and, uh, and we we ourselves are consumers as well they're changing so influencers are, are constantly trying to create a new trend to remain uh, relevant so innovative design is always being shared across those social media platform um, and lots of it and what they do is they throw lots of it um, at their audience until something hits and sticks and the upside of this is there's constant change and inspiration. However, the downside is trying to keep up with all the trends and there can be a lot of them. And that can be quite costly and time consuming for you uh, as a consumer or for you and your, your client if, if you're working in that space. So especially in the interiors industry where our fixtures and fittings last a little bit longer, um, it can be quite costly to constantly change. So while trends are always coming and going, consumers are increasingly prioritizing meaningful finishes and spaces uh, that celebrate self-expression much more than before. And I'm going to talk a little bit about craftsmanship uh, later on. And craftsmanship, personalization, self-expression, these are all keywords uh, circling trends at the moment. So we're seeing much more or many more clients interested in creating a unique space for themselves rather than trying to recreate what's online. 
So they, they, our, our consumers are, are wanting their spaces to reflect their personalities and their lifestyles and not look like everyone else's space. So they're wanting depth and soul. And that and that's one of the reasons it's really important to know and understand the trends and what's going on uh, out there in, in the bigger consumer space, but also be cognizant when you are making decisions around, um, around what trends you're going to implement. And the current drivers of, of change in, uh, in um, the trend space, it's this constant push and pull happening um, in uh, in the trend space. So there's a couple of big things that influence uh, ch changes in trends. So sustainability is a very big one. Remember, we've moved from a fad and we all know the way through now on the mega trend where it's become, it's a economy on its own has become part of our, our, our cultural norm. So there's an increasing number of clients that are, are seeking eco-friendly design choices from materials or low flow taps to energy efficient appliances. Also, what's a new trend happening within sustainability is something called re-commerce uh, with a RE in the front, re-commerce. So this is happening where it's more about the C2C economy, consumer to consumer economy, where people are on selling to each other. So that's starting to emerge in this space a bit. There's technological integration. So smart home technology and virtual reality for space planning are becoming standard tools uh, in, in design. And very interestingly, I, I've seen uh, recently, I need to track it down, is an ad on Facebook um, about using AI to design your interior space. So I think AI is going to become a bigger player in this space um, in the near future as it is on in all industries. Customization and personalization is a, is a big one. As I said, clients are looking for unique designs that reflect their, their own personality um, and lifestyle and moving away from this one size fits all solutions. And then global influence is a, is a really big one. So we now, as I mentioned with social media, we have this access to design ideas and products there's this growing influence of diverse cultures in interior design. So a good example is the adoption of African style in far, -flung, uh, far flung places like the Netherlands. African style is hugely popular in, in the Netherlands. Um, and that's as a result of um, access to, to global uh, uh, information and trends. Another one that could fall under global influences is geopolitical instability. So, for example, the Russian-Ukrainian war that has affected uh, supply chains quite a lot in the last couple of years. And uh, under global influences, uh, we can uh, put COVID in there. And we cannot underestimate what COVID did to the design world and uh, interior trends and how it impacted the spaces that we live, work and play in. I read a very interesting article today around the trends in retail spaces and they are, retailers are still struggling to get customers to turn outwards as in to come into retail spaces more. They, they very much um, have stayed online consumers as a result of COVID and that's a challenge uh, that retail spaces are facing. So. So from, from where we, COVID affected from where we live and work, how we plan our spaces, you know, we've shifted from big open plan spaces to more hybrid or close plan options based on need now, how we use those spaces, the finishes we have, and COVID's long-term impact is still being felt and will, uh, will for a long time to come. So those are the, some of the things that are driving the change in our market. But let's get on to the fun stuff, which is all about the trends. So 2024 is all about making a statement. So you would have seen um, over the last probably 18 months to two years, um, a lot about color and curves. And those are big things uh, that are happening in the interior space and those are the big things making a statement. So at the beginning of 2024 we witnessed this very big shift in design philosophy with designers opting for statement making tile options on both walls and floors. So th this trend characterized by its boldness and its creativity it offers a, a really sort of fresh perspective on how 
uh, um, surface finishes like tiles can transform our spaces. So rather than tiles being the background noise or, um, um, or even the other end of the spectrum where they can be overwhelming, what's happening now is the emphasis is on creating interest um, and statement pieces through unique pairings. And I'm gonna show you some very nice examples of this later on. But I would be remiss if I didn't start with a color of the year. As we all know, this year was peach fuzz. And interestingly enough, we are speeding towards color of the year 2025. So peach fuzz, um, it's nestled between sort of your more feminine pink and your, your more vibrant orange. Peach fuzz is this very sort of soft peachy hue. It's, it's got more of a vintage vibe to it. And it's warm and it's cozy and it creates a feeling of almost new modernity and it brings this a feeling of kindness and tenderness while communicating a message of caring sharing community and collaboration and a lot of those key descriptors that i've said there have come directly from the pantone institute themselves the way they describe um, the color of the year so interestingly enough uh, peach fuzz marks the 25th anniversary of the Pantone Color of the Year forecast. And, you know, very often Color of the Year, people are a little hesitant to incorporate. The interesting thing about Peach Fuzz and this year's Color of the Year is it actually falls under um, one of the bigger trends I'm gonna talk about um, very shortly. So it's actually, it, it almost, depending on how you use it, it almost falls under a neutral type color. It's softer, it's a warm, um, and it's, like I said, it falls under this trend of warmer neutrals that we, we, we're seeing in our interior spaces. But before we get there, I want to show you some of the other colors that are trending at the moment. And if you have a look here, um, I'm gonna show you one, two, three, four, five colors. So um, these are the top colors that are being searched for online. Um, from an interior's point of view. So you'll see here, desert orange. And I'm gonna make a comment on the end when, when we get to the end. You'll see here, aqua blue. And again, blue is going to come up later on in this presentation as a trend on its own. And here I've got moss green, uh, which is uh, uh, working very well with your biophilic uh, design and then mocha brown. And if you if I go back and I have a look at all of these, so uh, desert orange, aqua blue, moss green, and mocha brown, what you'll note about all of these colors is that they are inspired by nature and the outdoors. And that is linked to the sustainability trend that we're seeing uh, growing and growing. And it's also uh, based off the rise of biophilic design, incorporating um, nature into our living, working and playing spaces. Then we have the random outlier, which is gummy pink. And this comes off the back of the movie phenomenon of uh, Barbie. And this is the Barbie core trend. And this, I don't think you'll see around for much longer. This is a sort of a, a cultural blip on the radar based on uh, a mass consumerism. So pink, you'll probably see going, but you'll see a lot more over the coming years in terms of those uh, uh, nature inspired colors coming into our spaces. So in short, uh, what we've done is we've lost our fear of color. We've moved away from the gray and the cream and the grayish that, that were around for many, very many dec uh, decades. So what's happening is, and it's specifically coming out after um, uh, COVID where really we were qu questioning our mortality. And that's when we started uh, embracing color. So using colors and patterns that bring joy um, with, uh, we're starting to, to, to embrace that joy with more designers and consumers using tile surfaces to play around with brighter shades. And it's actually referred to as dopamine decor. And that's a big trend in 2024. And we're gonna see it going into 2025. So while neutral uh, colors, as well as neutral tiles are always going to be on trend, this year we're seeing a lot more color, more pattern and more texture. And I'm gonna to touch on texture uh, shortly, being used to create more joyful spaces. So 
I mentioned earlier about personalization and individuality, and one of the big trends is all around authenticity and craftsmanship. And this started pre-COVID and it's just grown since then. So the tile trends uh, for 2024 are all very much in line with the, the broader trend of embracing styles that we love or you love, creating spaces that are filled with charm and character and reflecting the person behind that space. So we're moving away from buying stuff out of a catalog or matchy match uh, everything. And craftsmanship um, is a key characteristic of this trend. So authenticity and craftsmanship uh, go hand in hand. And this is being reflected in interior styles that are very popular at the moment. So for example, Japandi, African, those kind of interior styles um, have a very strong thread of craftsmanship uh, coming through um, in uh, the elements that we're using in those spaces. So this is going to stick around for, for a while. The next one I wanted to have a look at is black bathroom tiles. So black, whether it's in the form of mosaics or larger formats, have really been making uh, waves in 2024. They bring a sort of very fresh, sophisticated look to, to these kinds of spaces. So black gives us the, um, sort of the little black dress of bathrooms. It's a very unique blend of luxury and versatility. They create a striking contrast um, so whether you're looking to add a touch of elegance um, or, or to any space, kitchens, bathrooms, or living spaces, black tiles will do that for you. And the deep richness of the color adds depth and the sophistication that we're looking for, turning ordinary spaces into extraordinary ones. Just in terms of bathrooms, be very careful in bathrooms when incorporating uh, larger surfaces of black, like you can see in, in this image on your screen, uh, bathroom spaces have very specific lighting needs, uh, and this is based on the functions that we use those uh, bathroom spaces for. And you need a large uh, source or, and multiple sources of light before using large amounts of black in bathrooms. But don't uh, uh, let uh, um, black as a color scare you away from bathrooms. It's very elegant and very sophisticated. Sticking on the darker tones, um, one of the trends at the moment is charcoal grey in kitchens. So white, all white kitchens have been going out of fashion for a little while and we're getting a little bit dramatic uh, in terms of our kitchen spaces. Um, and it creates a very sort of sleek and contemporary but quite moody vibe. And you can see here this very dark moody kitchen, even their backsplash is a dark and moody, but note they've got a, a massive source of light on the right hand side. So some people may feel that this is a bit dark and in that case the trend isn't uh, for them, but what you could do is you could pair it with something that could lighten it a bit. So it I could have this very sleek and contemporary moody vibe, um, but I could contrast it with something lighter, like the tile at the, the bottom uh, right here, which is the Kiosk Silver Range from, from Ital Tile. Or I could pair it with uh, maybe something like a warm gray that you can see, see here in, in the bottom left. And that'll give, um, that's the Rebel Gray Rectified um, product. And if I pair that very sort of um, dark, uh, moody, um, a black vibe with something warmer like this. It'll give it a lovely, uh, warm, bold, contemporary feel to it. It'll make quite a big statement. Rushed gold. So this is a favorite in the interior design world at the moment. And uh, warm metals and cool metals uh, tend to go in out of fashion. So your warm metals like brushed gold will be around for, for a couple of years. They tend to wane and then we, we have a cold metal period. We're in a warm metal phase at the moment. So this these brushed gold accessories, they really effortlessly add a touch of glamour to, to any space. So you can create a minimalist um, yet quite opulent design by opting for a well-lit space with whites and creams, beautiful light colors, and complement it with gold fix fixtures and uh, accents, and that'll create a, a, a deluxe kind of feeling. Or I can go for depth and contrast, and I can uh, include a richer or bolder accent color, such as, oh, sorry, 
such as sapphire blue we saw blue earlier as a, a trend in color we're going to talk about it more shortly or even the emerald green it's it's popping up here or even ter terracotta orange you can see it's on on this wall here so i've got two options in terms of the way i can use the brush gold i can go for very sort of sophisticated and deluxe or i can create quite a rich deep feeling to it so i mentioned um the terracotta in in the background there which is a very warm neutral that is appearing a lot and that's our next trend which is warm neutrals so rather than our boring beiges which we had for for very many years uh, or even the greyish, please let's not go back to the greyish stage. Earth tones um, have become the new neutral color for a while now. And earth tones are coming from the sustainability trend. Can you see how sustainability is sticking its tentacles into every part of design as it's becoming a cultural norm? So we're borrowing our, um, our neutral colors from uh, outdoors and we picking up from nature and, and incorporating those as neutral. So as I said, earth tones have been around as a new neutral for a little while now, and that's because they're versatile enough to transform, um, you know, from this craze for that oatmeal colored everything to something warm and inviting um, and quite sort of comforting and cozy um, to our more peachy shades. And this is where color of the year works very well. So colors like terracotta, okra, and our warm browns are inspired by, by nature, uh, creating spaces with very much a more organic, grounded feel to them. So very much linked to sustainability and biophilic design. So these warmer earthy tones work really well with our more natural materials. So wood or wood look tiles, our stones, our marbles, all of these paired with the earthy, uh, earthy neutrals add quite a lot of depth and texture. And like I said, remember um, color of the year, peach fuzz. Okay, this is where the, uh, the color of the year falls under, under this trend. It's appearing as a warm neutral. So I think we're going to see a little bit more of peach fuzz than we would normally out of a, a color of the year. Because if you have a look here, it doesn't need to be overtly peachy uh, to be incorporated into interior spaces. It can be quite muted. As you can see here on the wall tile in the background there, uh, it brings a, a quite a lovely sort of cozy warmth and like a subtle pizzazz to what would or could be a slightly more um, boring space that's created this lovely texture and pattern on the wall there. If the earthy warm tones are, are not your, your thing, um, like peach fuzz, your other options is the shades. And again, um, these are drawn from nature. The other shades like taupe, um, a little bit more of a warmer gray beige, and the softer grays still create a cozy and inviting space. As you can see here, this is the Vogue Grayish Gloss from Ittletal. Um, it, it creates this sort of perfect backdrop, very sort of subtle, um, quiet backdrop. Um, it still adds warmth, but it doesn't um, necessarily overwhelm the space um, for people who are not inclined more towards warmer colors. Speaking of our warm neutrals, one of the things that has been on the trend radar for a couple of years now, and uh, consumers are really starting to embrace it, is terracotta. So terracotta continues to be one of the most popular and enduring tile trends. And they, as a, as a finishing surface, they're really having their moment. So we have, you know, we can have them from very baked clay tones that warm up a space all the way to an earthy texture. Texture in itself is a trend at the moment. And they've got just the right balance between rugged and refined um, making this a, uh, they're referring to it as a forever trend, um, nothing lasts forever. So this is a, a quite a long-term trend. And when I talk about terracotta as a trend, I'm not talking about this where it's very old fashioned. It was a very much a standard uh, a shape and size. I'm talking more about this. So it doesn't have to be the traditional square uh, shape and size that we used to. 
terracotta now comes in a softened shade. So if you have a look here, um, I've got this lovely white shape um, uh, here in the top corner. Um, and I've got sort of my more muted co colors here in my top left. So it's coming in these softened shades and contemporary shapes to create a little bit more of a, a Mediterranean vibe, maybe sort of a, a, a rustic chic space or even um, a nature inspired interior. So if you're going for the biophilic um, uh, trend or a design, this would be a perfect pairing. So have a look at uh, this one uh, here in the top right hand corner that I referred to earlier, where it's got a white finish on it. How, or, or, or in actual fact, let's look at the black one here with this um, unusual star shape. So have a think about an industrial space, for example. If you were going for industrial earthy, how beautifully would this work with the space? Or the white option um, in the top right hand corner, if you paired that with um, uh, uh, in a contemporary or even a Scandinavian space, it would bring some really beautiful warmth and texture to it while sticking to the uh, design principles of, of a Scandinavian space it's, itself. So don't be afraid of terracotta. It's not as old fashioned as we think it is. It's become um, quite uh, the, the it girl. And you'll see it here, it's appearing here on the floor in this bathroom space. Um, in a very a very subtle uh, warm neutral and imagine that paired with white for a fresher space or even I could pair it with a wood look uh, um, tile to give it a little bit more of a country feel. So terracotta is timeless at the moment and then I've mentioned blue uh, a couple of times during the presentation and a deep blues are very much on trend at the moment. So your rich your rich colors like navy and indigo they really bring sophistication and tranquility to to interior spaces and uh, we all know that blue is a from a psychological in, impact it's a very calming and soothing color and that's why it often appears in our more private spaces like bathrooms so the deep blues that are on trend at the moment they create this very serene and elegant feel and environment that, that we're seeing on trend at the moment. But um, deep blues don't need to be dull or, or one dimensional, as you can see here from this product from Ethel Tile. If we add some pattern and texture, a, a pattern and, and uh, a color, other colors to it, um, and remember right at the beginning I spoke about um, colors and patterns are the things that consumers are choosing because they bring us joy. But adding a, 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 a pattern and um, a color to it like this, this is the Portofino porcelain. It really can become quite a fun and refreshing and something different. So it doesn't need to be um, a plain uh, tile all the time. Moving on to um, another trend around kitchens is, and it goes back to the dopamine decor that I mentioned, is we starting to embrace more color in our kitchens. And I wasn't expecting to like this trend, but I actually do. It's grown on me um, quite a lot, especially when you see a couple of the next images. So I mentioned at the beginning that black kitchens are, or the, 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 the dark gray kitchens are becoming a trend. And what we also have is our social spaces and social spaces are more um, uh, suited to warmer colors. And what we're seeing in these social spaces is a lot of colors and curves are coming to life. So modern kitchen concepts are pulling putting a greater emphasis on on design freedom and um, they're becoming spaces where we can express ourselves so not sticking to what's expected or how we've always done things now it's about colors and textures and the tactile trend that has been around for a few years now tactile surfaces came out of COVID um, where we were very much stuck to the smooth surfaces of technology. Uh, 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 things with um, texture on them shot through the roof as a trend post COVID. Um, we're seeing that in a lot of our kitchen spaces and other spaces um, and it continues to grow. Oh, and here you can see our colorful kitchens as well. So here we've gone from the warmer colors on the warmer side of the color wheel. And here we've got the opposites, cool and warm. And here, of course, we've got this beautiful, almost teal color happening here in this kitchen space. 
Okay, so moving on to one of the other trends that I mentioned right at the beginning is curves. So curves as a trend has been growing uh, over the last couple of years, and it's really cementing itself in our uh, in our design world. And it's very interesting where cu curves come from. They actually come, uh, so where the, the trend around curves comes from, it actually comes from the sustainability trend um, and the, the growth and adoption of biophilic design. So curves come from nature, uh, from more organic shapes, and what we're doing as a result of sustainability becoming ingrained in our society and the adoption of biophilic design is we are bringing nature in, into our space, and so we are bringing more organic shapes into our space and we're seeing it in uh you can see in this image on your screen it's in furniture it's in rugs it's in um uh tables uh sofas here you can see it on um in terms of the ceiling and have a look at how it's repeating on the back wall there and if you have a look at the furniture and the finishes in this space there's a lot of curves which are then being contrasted by the uh, stronger lines uh, uh, on the floor finish. But one of the things to notice in this space as well is have a look at the trend of warmer neutrals being used in here. And here again is a more peach fuzz version of um, the warmer trends, um, almost like a, a neon pop of peach fuzz appearing in this space. So I've got the combination of warm neutrals here and curves happening as well. And I can see it in the actual structure um, of the space as well as the furniture itself. So in terms of curves, we're seeing it in um, all types of uh, structures and finishes. So in the, in the left image, you can see it here in the cabinetry, um, um, especially in the bottom uh, cabinetry. And you'll see that finish in that cabinetry has got some fluting. That's a that's another design uh, interior trend that's been around for a little while. You'll see a lot of fluting in retail spaces, sort of thin panels of wood or tile that draw your eye upwards. Um, and what that does is it adds a bit of texture. So, and on the right, you'll see in this space that there's no sharp corners on anything. The walls, the furniture, the fittings, everything is got a very organic flowing feeling to it. And as I said, that's coming directly out of sustainability. Then I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation about a statement uh, using uh, large finished surfaces like tile surfaces as statement uh, pieces. And uh, I mentioned this big shift in design philosophy. So what happened is people are starting to, or designers and architects are starting to opt for these um, statement making tile combinations on walls and floors. And this, this trend has been assisted along its trend path by our larger formats that have become more easily accessible, more easy uh, to install. So this trend is characterized by boldness and creativity. And it offers us a fresh perspective on how tiles can transform spaces instead of them just being a background noise. And if you have a look at this tile on, this, on the floor, it's this beautiful um, faux stone. Uh, this is actually the Mystic Ocean gla uh, Gloss from, from Ethel Tile. Um, and this, this stone, a faux stone, appears as a, a trend on its own. I'm going to, to get to, to that shortly. And this trend also ties into another trend that's going on in, in the interiors design as a space at the moment, which is quiet luxury. Uh, which is very uh, which is very popular at the moment. So the era of bold and creative choices around colors and patterns and self-expression and the joy that we're looking for in our living, working and playing spaces, that takes center stage in defining the character uh, character of our spaces. So it's all about embracing the beauty of unexpected pairings and and large formats and gobsmacking patterns turning our walls and our floors into canvases 
of personal, personalized and capt captivating expressions. So I'm going to get to that stone shortly, but before we do that, we're going to talk a little bit more about bold colors and patterns. So along with color, the demand for patterned tiles has really gone from strength to strength um, over the last uh, couple of years. And um, uh, pattern is a ongoing eternal trend. What happens is every couple of years, the, the, the type of pattern changes. And this, this really ties into us um, wanting that characterful interior space that are, are a joy for us to, to spend time in. And so the more personalized our spaces are, um, the more we, we have a sense of self-expression. And that, as I mentioned, is becoming very popular. And you'll see here on this pattern here, what um, is coming through very strongly is that dopamine decor that I mentioned earlier. You'll notice uh, this tile on uh, this backsplash here. It's got the curves on it and as well as the trends. So gone are the days where people were worried about anything other than neutral walls and floors might deter a potential buyer if and when it came to, to selling a property. People are really now embracing the power of their spaces to make them happy and they're becoming much bolder and brighter in their choices. So you're going to see consumers um, being attracted to a lot more around pattern and color. And shortly I'm going to talk about a trend that uses plain tiles to create uh, patterns, which is quite clever. So our, our, our patterns are colorful and playful. So traditionally um, we had a single color uh, generally in a backsplash or on, on a wall. But tile companies and suppliers and manufacturers are broadening their horizons past neutrals and the monochromatic colors. And they, they themselves are embracing the demand for color and pattern. So things like the rich terracotta that I mentioned earlier, um, our, our, our peach fuzz, the, the forest front teal that you can see in, in this here, uh, tying into our biophilic trend, um, the deep blues, the sandy peaches, these are all on the rise. And you can see here very subtly in the background, the color of the year 2024 appearing here on, on uh, this pattern tile in the background. So we also seeing very interesting tile arrangements um, uh, that are being used to create a, a bit of interest. So depending on the type of space that you're doing for yourself or for a customer, it could be a quilt-like pattern or uh, the illusion of a rug or a frame on a wall to create a folk point. So what um, consumers and design, designers are doing is they're getting creative um, with their spaces. And that leads me to our, our next trend, which is creative layouts. So we're getting clever, um, transforming um, what would be something classic or potentially quite plain into something a little bit more extraordinary. So it's called, the trend is called tile framing. And you can see here in this example on your screen, these are just very plain, could be a 15 by 15 or 20 by 20, um, just plain black and white tile mix. But what they've done is they've tiled it in an unconventional way. So they've taken a more um, cost-effective tile or a plainer tile and laid it so that it has a lot more impact and you can use it to highlight various features. So for example, here, you can see that they're highlighting the shower. They're almost creating a frame in the shower. They're framing um, the, the hardware here. Um, and here in the middle here is another example. So you can see the tile framing there happening um, above the bath. And for example, what I could do if I really want, wanted to up the ante in terms of a particular style like Hollywood Glam or Hollywood Regency um, in this space is I could hang a chandelier down from here and uh, frame the chandelier in that space um, to really use the framing to, to its best advantage. So don't be afraid to use a very ordinary tile. It could be square, it could be a subway. We're seeing a lot of creative lay layouts with subway uh, shapes. 
to create tile framing um, in, a, more, in a, a very cost effective way. Speaking of creating patterns, the other thing, thing we're seeing a lot of, uh, it's very, very popular, is decorating uh, or designing with stripes on tile surfaces. So it's come about as, um, uh, as a result of the eternal war between wallpaper and uh, uh, harder finishes like tiles. So instead of um, losing out on uh, a patterned wallpaper in a damp or a wet environment like a bathroom, people are now tiling to create Oh, sorry, to create stripes. Um, and it creates that illusion of height that we, we might want. So we're seeing it here on, in this bathroom on the left-hand side. And you can actually see it here and on the bottom of this bath in the middle picture, drawing our eye upwards to, to that framing um, in, uh, in that uh, bath space. So there's a lot of stripes going on. And again, you can see they're using a very plain ordinary tile in two colors to create that effect. And the other thing is the checkerboard pattern. So the very traditional checkerboard pattern um, has become uh, popular again. It's one of those things that goes in and out of fashion. And checkerboards is very much in fashion and interiors over the last couple of years. And uh, whether you like it or not, and depending on your version of it, it's around to stay for, for at least the next year or so. And you can see it appearing here on the right-hand picture. It's almost got a suede finish to it, which gives it a much more contemporary feel. And it's being done in a warmer terracotta or a warmer neutral, along with this lovely suede finish in uh, black. And here you can see it in other formats. It was, you know, checkerboards were once sort of submerged in, in traditional design. And it's now emerged as its own uh, trend in its own right. And it's evolved into a really sort of hot surface and tile trends in, in bathroom and um, other spaces. And have a look here in this bedroom space. They're using it on the floor, but then they're running it up the wall as well, almost creating the impression of a headboard. So whether you're opting for your more traditional black and white uh, um, palette when it comes to checkerboards or, or creating a union of more um, vibrant or modern colors, the checkerboard pattern is, it adds a really nice sort of graphic uh, touch or pattern to a space without being too over the top. Moving on to our next one is 3D designs. So at the moment, we're being constantly wowed by three-dimensional wall coverings. And this year, manufacturers are, are very much continuing this uh, trend. They're embracing tile textures from graphic fluted surfaces to, to more um, uh, organic type incorporations in terms of 3D design. So if you remember that um, kitchen that I showed you uh, with, um, uh, the curved trend, and I spoke about the fluted uh, design. What you see on the screen in front of you is a fluted tile, and it creates a 3D design, but it creates a sense of texture as well, and it's sort of very graphic. Um, it creates a lot of graphic interest on a vertical surface without being too uh, in your face. So here's another example of it here, where I've got more subtle reliefs, um, mimicking my mat my natural stone and my natural shapes, um, but it's got a 3D element to it. And you can see here my biophilic design coming through very strongly in this as well. And keeping in with our 3D designs, so dimensional design has shifted to individual tile pieces where each tile has its own 3D element to it. So at recent design shows, many of the global brands were showcasing tiles with raised designs that create this sort of ever-changing ever appearance as the light shifts as you move through the space. So as you can see, with the 3D peak in each of these tiles um, appears uh, at a different north, south, east, west. And as you move, different surface, surfaces are going to glimmer. So the dimensional surfaces make a really good backsplash or an accent wall offering enough texture and visual interest to stand out and, and create a statement. And this one uh, that you can see on the screen in front of you, this is exclusive metallic 
um, gold embossed from, from Etteltown. Then this is a very interesting one that I'm, I'm fascinated to see what happens uh, uh, with this trend. And that is the trend of creating optical illusions. And this that you can see behind the bath on the image in front of you is actually wall tiles. And these are referred to as art walls. So we've had wallpaper like tiles with intricate repeating patterns, and those have uh, gained popularity in recent years, you know, as we've started to improve the digital printing uh, techniques. And what's happening is new designs are taking the trend to the next level with really stunning effects. So these art walls, they create this dramatic illusion of layered textile drapery, as you can see here on, on the image um, in, in, on the screen in front of you, with all the benefits of uh, porcelain surfacing. So um, uh, moisture issues, damp issues, um, uh, uh, ability to clean it, and it's creating this beautiful illusion that from afar you would never know uh, the word tiles. So if I didn't tell you these word tiles, you wouldn't know. When you see a closer up uh, image of this particular installation, here is actually the graph line running up here um, in this application. So this is going to be very interesting to see what happens in this space, um, uh, what's going to happen with art walls. Um, and this is part of our um, art walls and it ties back into our 3D uh, shape trend as well. And that's, um, you can see here, we're using 3D to create an optical illusion. So the right hand picture is a close up image of uh, the tile surface. And the left hand image is actually the tile surface, uh, full tile surface. Uh, the picture is taken from an angle to show you the effect. So what is happening is they are using 3D uh, in different shapes, and it's they're using vertical lines um, that have very cleverly been used um, to create this optical illusion of almost like a shimmer, and it's creating this movement in a tile. So what appears as almost like a, a wavy wallpaper from the other side of the room, it's actually singular tiles with this varied stripe design as you get closer to it. So today we can do large scale designs that can help you create this uh, focal point using one tile and it can create um, quite a beautiful effect in terms of movement in the space without it being too overwhelming. So when we spoke about the, the statement surfaces trend, I mentioned stone. And stone, evocative stone, is very much on trend at the moment. And it's coming off the sustainability trend, our need to incorporate uh, our, our uh, outdoors into our, um, into our indoor spaces. And the amount and quality of tile that's made to look like stone is growing in leaps and bounds. So we're getting to the stage where it can be quite difficult to tell the difference between the real thing and the manufactured version. So manufacturers are continuously looking for stone in nature that they can replicate. And they're drawing inspiration from the magnificent beauty of our, our Earth's geological past so that you can have that look for less in your space at the same time as we're doing a less ecological damage. So we're seeing colors, veining, coal lines and even visible fossils variations coming through in the, um, as much as you would see in real stone versions. So some even now have added texture to them to the stone like tile to create a non-slip surface so that we can use them in our wetter spaces like bathrooms, pool areas or any of those kinds of spaces. I've spoken a little bit about texture so texture as itself is very much a trend at the moment. And as I mentioned, it it's, uh, it's, tends to come in and out of fashion, but post COVID texture came, came into, the, into the room, flung open the door and said, I have arrived and I'm here to stay. 
and it was very much driven by we were all very much zoomed out and MS Teams and technology um, overwhelmed during COVID. And we were craving access to nature um, in the hardest times of lockdown. Um, and that's what's driven texture as a big trend. And we're seeing it very much in tiles at the moment. So recent tile ch trends show that more and more of us are opting for irregular shifting surfaces. So it's going back to that craftsmanship I spoke about earlier, rather than things that are perfectly finished and are smooth and sleek. So glossy to, uh, flat tiles are out. And 2024 going into 2025 is all about tiles and finishes that ha have a ton of character and encourage human touch with that three-dimensional surface that I've spoken about. And it's got bumps and grooves on it. So um, bathrooms, which often have a lot of directional lighting, you know, ceiling uh, fixtures, wall sconces, mirror lighting, these are perfect places to incorporate tiles that have rich texture to them. As the, what happens is the directional lighting really shows off the texture beautifully as it bounces off the, the different surfaces. So textured tiles and surfaces give us that depth and interest and bring a little bit of um, a subtle, a, a little bit of personality to that space. And it can be as loud as you want or as subtle as you want. So here is a more subtle version, the Chiara uh, Blano hexagonical map uh, that really shows off that textured tile surface beautifully. And this is a really lovely alternative to something like um, the more traditional slick subway that we're seeing. And here you can see it appearing here as well in one of Ital Tile's products, this beautiful gold range that they've got. And each tile has its own pattern. So there's our pattern trend again, and it's got a 3D raised surface um, as a texture. And as the sun moves through these spaces, so you'll get the different patterns being highlighted individually. Just imagine that as a large accent wall. Um, and then our next one is patterned tiles and tiled patterns. So we can have tiles with patterns printed on them or you lay them in, um, or the other way to do it is to lay them in such a way that we are creating patterns with those tiles, as we saw with the tile framing. So what's happening with patterns at the moment, like I said, patterns tend to, to patterns are always on trend, they just tend to change their, their, their appearance. So geometric and your nature inspired tiles are very much in favor. So nature inspired, you'll remember the, the fern front that I showed you earlier and the green and the teal. And then you've got the geometric uh, trends at the moment. So the geometric uh, pattern is always very much at the forefront, but it's getting quite creative. So at the moment, um, some hand drawn painterly or sort of um, more craftsmanship, there's that word again, type patterns are appearing uh, in a lot of uh, tiles at the moment. And as you can see on this one um, on the screen in front of you, this is actually a pattern that's um, inspired by Islamic patterns that you see a lot more in your Northern African countries like Morocco. Um, you're seeing a lot of these type of patterns at the moment in interior spaces. So don't be afraid of pattern, they're very popular at the moment. Then concrete inspired. So concrete as a material to, to produce is not very sustainable. And it's, it's very clear that we need to move away from the very carbon intensive concrete towards more sustainable finishes. But on the other hand, the push-pull is the brutalist aesthetic um, that concrete works so well with uh, remains as popular as ever and it's quite in demand by consumers. So concrete tiles gives us the best of both of those worlds. It marries the environmental benefits as well as the durability of ceramics with the look and feel of uh, cement that the market is demanding. So with different interpretations of the, the material itself, you can now have varying colors and sizes of, for example, aggregate, like you can see on the, the, the screen in front of you, um, to give the designs more of a handcrafted 
or craftsmanship like quality and there's that that word again that's pulling through in a lot of our trends it's all about individual uh, individualism and expressing our personalities so while the finish is naturally suited to to larger formats and that's how we've seen it over the last couple of years it's starting to lend itself now to <coughs> excuse me to smaller formats um, you know, you send, you're you getting the, this raw beauty and elegance in smaller decorative styles like this, um, this parallelogram uh, format that you can see in front of you. That's quite contemporary and it's not doing as much earth damage as uh, uh, concrete itself does. Stick mosaics. So rectangular uh, forms, which are always uh, popular, in 2024, rectangular forms popped up once again but in a very different scale um, and this is this particular tile and finish is influenced by japanese porcelain and um, you will see these a lot in japandi style a very popular interior style at the moment and that's one of the reasons why these have become uh, uh, quite popular is because of the popularity of japandi these are called stick mosaics you might know them as Kit Kat tiles and these are done in a, a pottery glaze that is very uh, unique to to Japan, the type of pottery finish that they do. And you'll you'll see these in the showroom around you um, when you, when you go into into the Italy Town showrooms. So whether you're stacking them vertically or horizontally, the precision um, and the clean lines of the tiles, copied uh, coupled with the sort of undulated imperfections of the glaze the more craftsmanship there's that word again of the glaze gives you this lovely contrast and this also ties into the 3d 3d trend that we've been talking uh, about so as i mentioned you'll be seeing them in japandi and even scandinavian interiors in scandinavian you'll see this as a pop of color or you'll see it in the more sort of muted whites and creams large formats so as i mentioned earlier when we spoke about statement floors and walls the large formats are becoming much more more popular so the trend around large formats is continuing to grow with sizes becoming uh, more and more grandiose so the larger formats are offering us this the more sleek seamless look that's perfect for more modern um, extreme modern aesthetics so the reduced grout lines not only contributes to uh, the cleaner visuals, but it also uh, means less maintenance. So larger format ceramic tiles are particularly popular in open plan spaces, which help, and what they do is they help enhance the sense of size and openness in the room. So this is tying into that, that um, flooring, that statement flooring and surfaces trend that we spoke about earlier. So as our technology and our transport and our installation methods improve so we're going to see um, more and more larger formats happening in our spaces going back to our eco-friendly and our sustainability you'll see that sustainability has popped up regularly uh, in in our trends presentation so sustainability continues to be a driving force in interior design and tiles um, are a driving force in uh, tiles are very much at the forefront of this movement and recycled tiles are becoming more uh, accessible and available to consumers so in 2024 going into 2025 expect to see tiles made from recycled materials gaining popularity they eco-friendly they not only help reduce environmental impact but they also offer us unique textures and colors that we might not find in our more conventional materials so for for home and owners or designers and architects looking to make more eco-conscious choices a sustainable tiles that you're seeing them particularly in mosaics like you can see on the screen in front of you and these make a perfect choice tying uh, into our sustainability trend and one of the last trends that we're going to look at this afternoon is statement pieces so i started the presentation talking about how craftsmanship and personality 
are key drivers in consumers at the moment. And statement pieces are in keeping with this trend around personalization. Um, and the concept of making a statement has really emerged as a potent force in interior, trans, uh, in interior transformation. It's a key design trend in 2024, and we're only going to see it grow in uh, 2025, 2026. So that we've got this era of bold and creative choices, bold um, and creative around our colors, our patterns, our craftsmanship, and it's allowing uh, tiles and pieces to take center stage in defining the, the character of spaces. And as you can see on uh, the screen in front of you is this beautiful, a uh, biophilic designed um, space. Uh, I couldn't give you a better example of borrowed scenery or biophilic design with this one. But the statement piece, particularly in that, um, um, it's almost a chartreuse kind of a, a bath color with a matching uh, basin there, really is a statement piece. And we're embracing the beauty of unexpected pairings and we're turning our interior spaces, particularly our walls and floors, into canvases for personalized and captivating uh, expressions. And that's very much what trends are about this year and going into next, is about personalization and expression. And that is all we have time for this afternoon. Thank you very much for your uh, time and your attention. I hope you learned something and go forth and conquer the world of trends. Melanie, thank you so much. Again, another informative presentation and thoroughly enjoyed lots of information over that hour and a bit so thank you so much we have um, you must be exhausted but we have one or two questions if you still have energy left in you so um one of the questions are you know a lot of these larger a lot of these patterned um trends seem to be on larger format tiles so what does that impact the mosaic world where mosaics were primarily brought through to us for patterns uh, for feature walls etc cetera, etc cetera. but now it seems to be pushing more over. i mean we sell both and we want to sell both but um how is the pattern tiled versus the mosaic and the shift there so i think there's a there's definitely place for for both so the the nature of a mosaic is going to create a pattern in itself and um, the pattern is just a little bit more subtle the other thing mosaics do, so if a mosaic is plain, so like a, 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 a penny round tile, if a mosaic is plain like this, like that, what it's doing is it's creating a subtle pattern just, just by the fact it has different shapes and forms. But what it also does is it creates quite a lot of texture. And so okay. I think there's a place for both. And it would depend very much on the project, uh, uh, the style or the look that, or the feeling that you're going for and, and the, the person who's going to use their space and their, their personal choices. So you'll have consumers who want a little bit more uh, subtle pattern and they'll probably be drawn more to a pattern created by a mosaic. And then you'll get those braver souls who are um, drawn more towards a larger format pattern and they want to create that statement i that can bold. also yeah and i can also pair the two together so i can pair a larger pattern with a complementing uh, um mosaic so for example i could put the pattern on a shower wall and the mosaic on the floor both are creating a a, a pattern but they're working really well together because we using we could use the the design principle of repetition to 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 join the two together. So I don't one on the yeah, yeah. they'd work really well together, and it it very much depends on the look that that the consumer is is going for. It's all about personal choice. Okay, so yes, there's still a lot Absolutely. of other left for mosaics. Yeah. And then there was a question just around mirrors. Um, I know in our last trend talks. Um, and you didn't touch it on here, but I mean, large round mirrors that were taking up huge volumes of space as a feature within the bathroom. Is that still a trend or where are we headed with mirrors? Yeah, so mirrors very much. So mirrors very much are, are much larger format at the moment. Um, and uh, we the interesting thing about mirrors is it's actually 
um, being influenced a lot by the curve trend. So pill shapes, as in P-I-L-L, pill shapes are very much on trend at the moment. You see them uh, in tile surfaces and uh, the, one of the most obvious places to see the pill shape trend is in mirrors. You get, instead of your standard um, rectangle or square mirror, we're seeing a lot of um, pill shapes. So uh, mirrors are responding to the curve trends because it's quite a nice element to incorporate that in. The other thing in mirrors that you're seeing at the moment is uh, puddle shapes. So much more of an organic kind of shape and very often they'll be, um, they'll be in a set. So I'll have three mirrors in different puddle shapes uh, appearing on a wall and it becomes much more of a design or, or a statement piece. So mirrors are um, moving away from just being functional to being an expression of style uh, as well and an expression of trends. And interestingly enough, for such a hard functional surface, they're responding to, to trends as well. So yes, larger, curvy, um, uh, anything goes with mirrors at the moment. Huge feature within the yeah. space. Okay. Yeah. And then we have a question just around hexagons and subways, because some time ago hexagons did show its face. Is that still yeah. a is that still a trend? And then just on subways, I mean, that's a timeless classic. I think it will stay with us forever and forever and forever. But um, is subway still a major player in, in our pattern tile? Well, if I can say the, the, the feature walls within kitchens, bathrooms. So as long as I've been doing uh, this job and researching trends and, and uh, every year we come across articles that say um, a subway tiles are on their way out. They're going out of fashion. And you know as well as I do that subways are not going out of fashion. People love yeah. subways. They, they're never going out of fashion. People love say, uh, subways and they like a, a like a staple. They're sort of the bread and butter of um, interior spaces. What is happening around subways is they're starting to get a little bit more creative with them. So manufacturers are producing a slightly different version. So our very traditional subways um, and one day when we've got a lot of time, which we don't have tonight, is a very interesting story um, about how subways came about. It's actually, I think, connected to the typhoid crisis in the oh. States many, 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 many dec decades ago. Um, and why they were developed was it was um, one of the ways to show cleanliness, um, sanitization. It's linked to, to that. And it's amazing. It's become the bread and butter of interior spaces. But what manufacturers are doing is rather than producing the standard gloss uh, beveled um, type of subways that we're very used to, we've got um, more rustic versions, we've got longer thinner versions, we've got versions in pastel colors. And so um, the, the, the trend around subways is tying into other trends, so the color trend is, is impacting on um, uh, subway, so we're seeing them in more colors. So we're seeing different uh, versions of the, the subway coming out, and also what's happening is people are becoming quite creative about the way they, they use them. So instead of just laying them um, horizontally stacked, whatever the case may be, people are using them to create patterns, they're using them to, to create visual effects, optical illusions. So absolutely, subways are in, we just be getting more clever with the way that we use them to create to um, create that sense of uh, personalization, and also manufacturers are are getting on the bandwagon by producing different types of subways, giving us more options. Hexagons, uh, particularly when it comes to to things like um, mosaics, and you saw when I spoke about the texture, that beautiful white. A hexagon shape. Hexagons as a pattern are very much in. Geometrics as a shape are very much in. You saw it when I spoke about um, the, the, the patterns appearing on tiles. Geometrics is very much on trend. So you'll see geometrics around uh, and they're very popular and they are particularly if it's a plain um, a, a tile, um, hexagons are a great way to incorporate um, a, a, a subtle pattern, just because they're they're a pattern, they create a pattern just by their shape, and also to incorporate a little bit of texture. So those two are mainstays of interiors. They're not going anywhere. 
So we're safe on those ones. You're good. Uh, so we just had one last question. Um, one of the uh, attendees have just requested if they could get hold of you um, for one of their client briefs or get in contact with you. How would they get in contact with you? So I don't know if you can still see the screen in front of you um, is uh, my website address um, or you can get in touch with me on info at, and this is all one word, chaptersinteriors.com. And that's me. Drop me a mail and let's see how I can help you. Happy. Um, alternatively, you can get hold of uh, me at Itat's House. So it's Russell N at Itat's House. That's co.za. If you have a challenge, contact with Malden. I'll just connect the two of you um, to make sure that um, you do get in contact. Sorry, Mal, I just see another question here. Not sure if this is a question uh, is too technical, but how does one keep white grout to stay white? Hmm. I think that's a technical question. It is a technical question. We actually have uh, products here at Itatal, supplied by TFC, um, specific towel cleaners, so there is options. Um, you can have a look at our websites as well um, for our TFC products, and you'll definitely be able to see a couple of options to clean the towels, clean the grout, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but yeah, we can assist you with that as well. Alternatively, you can get hold of me directly, and then I'll put you in contact with one of our suppliers that can assist you further. But Mal, I think that's it for today. Thank you so much. Perfect. No, no, thank you. And thanks to everybody for attending and listening. It's been fantastic. Everybody, thank you for attending. Um, I know uh, Karina and her team at GoToWebinar will assist with all of the certificates. Alternatively, you can get, in, get hold of us directly and we'll assist you where you can. Thank you, everybody.